Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and this is the first video in an art quilt series called Garden Archway. Do you love paint by number projects? Do you love making art quilts? Well, I've combined the two concepts into one fun collage style art quilt where we're painting by numbers but with fabric and all kinds of embellishments, whatever you choose to add. Today I'm going to walk you through the pattern for a garden archway. And uh, here's the thing, y'all. Even if you do not wish to make this particular quilt, I still hope you follow along in this series and that it inspires you to break out some fabrics, break out some embellishments, and make an art quilt of your own. We're going to be starting a new quilt series and the videos will be released every Sunday morning, starting at the first weekend of September. Sunday morning, y'all. A new video will come out as we start from the very beginning making this art quilt. Look, it comes in two sizes. There's a great big large one like this. That's the full size pattern pinned to my design wall. And then the half size version right here. Now in the videos, I believe I'm going to be making the smaller version. Okay, the pattern includes both of them. I'll be making the smaller version in the videos, but I'm half tempted to load up some fabric on the long arm and make the full size version as well. So uh, <laughs> I haven't decided fully on that, but stay tuned to see what I do and uh no matter what, this is going to be so much fun. So much fun. We're going to be using all kinds of techniques. Uh, I'll walk you through what all is included in the pattern. There is a pattern in my Etsy shop. The link for this pattern is in the description box, y'all. It is $7.50. But like I said, even if you don't wish to follow along and make this particular quilt, I'm hoping you follow along and join me each Sunday morning as we reveal from start to finish each week this garden archway quilt. Now let's go take a look and I'll go over the things you need to make this quilt and I'll go over the pattern. Did you know that you can create a collage style art quilt from pretty much any photograph or drawing? I think that's amazing and that's what I've done here. I've been working on this for a few months now, I have this drawing that I did of a garden archway. And from this drawing, I have created this art quilt. But I thought, let's uh, kick it up a notch and create this as a paint by numbers art quilt. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? But in all seriousness, though, y'all, I hope that you do take the creative liberties in changing colors. I have provided color swatches for you and a number guide. We'll take a look at all of that here in just a second. But I do hope that you feel like you could take creative liberties in using any colors and materials that you want to if you are making this quilt. But here's my drawing. This is what I started with. So from this, we have created <laughs> all of this. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, this pattern is actually going to have four downloads, okay? Uh, the first page is a one-page document, one-page PDF with your fabric requirements. Now, it's going to give you uh, all the things that you need to make this quilt either full size or the half size version, okay? Uh, you have your backing, your batting, your binding fabric, you will be using a foundation fabric for this quilt and we'll go over all of that. And then that there's some optional things that you might need in the construction of your quilt, depending on how you choose to make your art quilt. And then all of these numbers down here coincide with the color swatches and I'll show you that just in a second. And how much approximately you'll need. But here's the thing, I'm really hoping even if you do go out and buy some fabrics for this quilt, that you really uh, resource from your stash a good amount of fabric for this project. So here is the one page fabric requirement sheet. This is a download by itself. And then you have a four page instruction guide. Now, because of the nature of this quilt, y'all, it's an art quilt. And so the way that I put this together 
might vary a little bit in the way that you decide to make your art quilt. In this guide, I've given you some recommendations, some uh, things that might be helpful, especially if you are a new quilter and you're like, art quilt, I don't know, that sounds kind of scary. I've given you some tips uh, that might make it a little less frightening to tackle this art quilt. So I hope that even if you are new and you really want to make a quilt like this, that you go ahead and give this a try. So there's four pages of instructions and they're just basically guides. We will be making this quilt together from start to finish. So even if you want to purchase this pattern and get everything ready and wait until the videos start to start making it with me, then by all means, feel free to do that. So there's four pages of instructions. And then the third uh, file that you'll be downloading is the number map. And this is where each one of your pieces, this is just a map of all of your pieces. Uh, each one of your pieces has a little number. This number goes to a color swatch. And look, I even gave you just an example. If you use the colors by the color swatches of what your quilt might look like, especially if you're using all solids, okay? And I have used the Kona solids as my color swatches. And so I'll be going and purchasing a little bit of probably most of these colors in the Kona fabric line. And uh, yes, there are, let's see, 17 colors to choose from. Now, some of these I already have and some of them uh, I probably will not purchase because I have some gorgeous prints already in my stash that I'm going to combine with these solids to make this collage style quilt. So the fabrics that you use are really up to you, right? But these are the color swatches and even in the description of this listing, I say, if you don't have a color printer, you can open up this PDF document in your computer, your laptop, your tablet, or even your mobile device and take a look at the colors on your screen when picking out your fabrics. And so you don't have to have a color printer. Uh, just pull up the PDF on your computer screen, your tablet, and take a look. So that is one of the files. And then y'all, there is a 30 page, yes, <laughs> I said 30 pages. So you might need to buy a new realm of paper from the Walmart. <laughs> 30 pages for this pattern. And even if you print it off a uh, half size, it's still going to use 30 pages. It's only going to make your, uh, your pieces smaller on the sheet. So you'll need 30 pages of copy paper to print off this pattern. So this is what the full size pattern looks like, 30 pages. And here in a second, I'm gonna show you how I trim my pages and tape them together because once you print this off, there is a little bit of work to do. I'm gonna show you the little numbers here in just a second. Each one of your pages is numbered and there's these little guides. I'm gonna show you that, a close up of that too, of where to trim your paper. It looks like a little L bracket. I'll show you here in just a second how I trim my pages and tape them together to get the pattern ready. And if you wanna go ahead and print this off and work on getting this all taped together, no matter if you're doing the half size or the full size, in the week before we actually start this series, then that would be a great time to do that. As always, if you have any questions about this pattern, feel free to jump down to the comment section or join me over on Etsy. The link for my Etsy shop is down in the description box. And feel free to ask me questions. I'll try to be as helpful as I can, but doesn't this look like so much fun? We're gonna be exploring all kinds of methods, y'all. Uh, I will be using tool on my art quilt, but you don't have to, and I'll talk about that in the guide. I want to use some yarn uh, on my art quilt to add some dimension 
maybe some green yarn to give it like a mossy appearance. What if instead of using one great big solid piece of fabric here, you broke it up and it made it, made it look like uh, gravel or grass with a little pathway of lighter fabrics going through here. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? That's one of the things that I love most about art quilts is the way it's made and the finished quilt really depends on the quilt maker itself, right? And you're really only limited by your imagination. And I hope that you really get creative and get the creative juices flowing and you use all types of textile fabrics in your quilts, uh, all kinds of maybe beads or embellishments. And most of all, I hope that uh, you share your process and your progress of your art quilt with me. I would love to see it. And you can either join me uh, on the Creative Crew group. There will be a link in the description box if you're not already a member. And uh, if you're not on Facebook, you can send me your pictures through Etsy as well. There's a messaging feature through Etsy. And you can send me your progress right through Etsy. I would love to see it. All right, let me show you a really good close-up of the little numbers that you're going to look for in case your pages get mixed up. They do print off in the correct order. You, uh, If you don't have Adobe Reader, uh, it's free on the internet and it's really helpful for printing off PDF documents. Okay, and that's what I use. I'm going to show you here in a second how to print this off. Uh, but yeah, Adobe Reader. If you don't have it, grab that and then you're ready to start printing. Before you head to the printer, I want to give you the sizes featured in this quilt pattern. The quilt on the left is the full size, which measures 38 and a half inches wide by 58 and a half inches long. The smaller quilt, the quilt on the right, is 19 inches wide and 29 inches long. So full size and half size. And I wanted you to see that before you head to the printer so that you know which printing options to choose when printing off your 30 pages. Now let me bring up Adobe Reader and show you how to change your print settings if you want to. Opening up the pattern with Adobe Reader, we're going to hit the print option. When we do, a box like this pops up. To print your pattern the full size, make sure to check actual size in your print settings. You'll see there are 30 pages to print. Add some paper to your printer and you're ready to click the print button. If you want to do the half size version of this quilt, in the print settings, you will choose custom scale and change the percentage from 100 to 50%. Now, if you wanna see an update of what your pages will look like, go over to the right of your screen. You'll see an example of what your pages look like right on the right of your screen and click the arrows, one of these two arrows, and that updates what your pages will look like. And you can see at 50%, the size of your pattern dramatically reduces. Now you're ready to print. On your pages, there are little numbers with L brackets for trimming your pages. Each one of your pages has a number just like this. There is an A, B, C, D, and E column. The number represents which row in the pattern you are working with. So A1, B1, C1, D1, E1, that's all on the first row. And no matter which size pattern you decide to go with, there will be L-shaped trim brackets on all four corners of each one of your pages. Once you have all 30 pages printed out, we're ready to go ahead and tape them together. Some tape would be handy and a paper trimmer would also be really handy. So we're gonna start on the very top row. We have A1, we are not trimming at all. Then every additional page on the first row, we're trimming the left side only. So this is B1, we'll trim the left side and tape that into place. Continue to trim the left side of each additional page on row one.
match up those brackets and all of your pattern lines and simply tape each page. There should be five on the first row. Trimming away the left side, tape each one of your pattern pieces together for your first row. So this should be A1, B1, C1, D1, and E1. E1, you'll see we've come to the end of our quilt on the right side. We're ready to start assembling the next row, which will be A2, B2, C2, D2, and E2. So you might need a larger table to put together the full size version of this quilt pattern. I'm just gonna be shifting everything here on my cutting table. We're back to the left side of the quilt. For the first block in each one of these additional rows, we are trimming away only the top on the L-shaped trimming brackets. For the first page, trim only the top. For the following pa pages in this row, we're gonna trim the left and the top. So trim away the left side and the top and then line that up and tape it together. Left side and top. And you're gonna repeat this process all the way through each one of your rows. paper trimmer comes in really handy for cutting nice straight lines. You could do it with scissors, but I have shaky hands y'all. So it is a lot easier and neater if I use a paper trimmer. We're coming to the right side of row number two. And then we'll shift everything back over and begin taping row number three. So this one, we are only trimming away the top on A3, we will tape that into place. And then on B3 and the rest of the pages, the left side and the top. And we're just gonna repeat this process all the way through taping our pattern together. Make sure your tape is nice and smooth. If it buckles at all, pull it up and retape. Now, once that you have your paper pattern all taped together, all of that work is done. Now comes the really fun parts, right? We get to source some fabrics for our quilt. So along with my quilt, along with the Kona colors, the yummy, gorgeous colors I shared in the swatches, Along with going to go get some of those from the fabric store, I plan on sourcing from my stash, y'all. Maybe even my closet, who knows? <laughs> but you know what? I think the more varied types of fabric and threads or whatever you decide to use in your quilt, the more different types of fabric and prints and colors that you add, the more interest and depth you achieve in your quilt. And I think that is amazing. Of course, you could just use the colors that I've provided in this quilt pattern, but I hope that you do. Maybe go through the crumbs that you've been saving. Go through your little scrap baskets and buckets and boxes and pull all those out because you know what? They could find a gorgeous home in an art quilt much like this one. Let's see, I plan on maybe adding some bits of embroidery thread as some highlights here and there. Some eyelash yarn, maybe. Some fuzzy, wooly yarn. Maybe even some velvety fabric here and there. Who knows? I don't know yet, but that that's the fun and excitement part, right? That's the part to get really excited about going through all the different textiles. I hope, I don't know if you can hear my bird. <laughs> Sorry. I hope that you enjoy this quilt 
and I hope that you start joining me on Sunday mornings. We're going to get started next weekend, y'all. So set your reminders and make sure to tell your friends. If y'all are looking for a new uh, quilt to do together, a new project, maybe you can work on this with me in the midst of doing a larger patchwork quilt. This will just give you something uh, to let your creative juices flow and an outlet in between working on a larger project. I'm super excited. I cannot wait to see you next Sunday. Until then, I hope you have fun creating and make sure to join me on Thursdays where I usually go live doing pin cushions or quilt blocks. Who knows what we do on Thursdays? But I look forward to seeing you then too. Make sure if you haven't yet to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that when these videos pop up, you get a notification and you can come join in all the fun. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you for sure next Sunday. Bye everybody.